Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God to be in the house of God this morning. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We became hungry for God this morning. Oh, we just reach out and talk to this. Oh, God, we just love you today. Praise you, Lord. Lord, we just say, consume us, God. Father, because you are consuming fire. There's probably things that you want to burn out of us, God. So that we can be more like you, Lord Jesus, this week. Father. We've got to direct the Father. Lord, as we reach out to you in our service and in our worship and in our giving, Father, in the Word, Lord, I pray that we'll be here transformed by your name. Lord, to go out into a world, Lord, where we do not fit in. We are obviously strangers passing through. Lord, let your anointing be on us, God. Let your anointing will break the yoke of our problems. Religion won't do it. Let the anointing of the Spirit of God will break the yoke of bondage. Let your eyes be those from mountains. The Lord, we just love you. We praise you this morning. How many are you ready to worship today? Let your heart will just put your hands together.
hungry, and he has to come day in and day out. Do you need to do worship? I just want everyone to put their distractions aside, and let's just realize he's here. So let's just focus on the kingdom of kings in this place today. Just come and have your way, God. Come and do a deeper work within us today, Father. That we may come and we may realize who we are, God, and you. And we may realize that we are called to a higher purpose and a higher calling. And Lord, that we may not sit down and come and follow, but we may step into the deeper things of you today. Thank 
The Holy Spirit said, I want you to maintain that level throughout the week. You gotta maintain that level. You can come here to walk out of here and go backwards. Stay focused here. Stay focused. You gotta do this. And I want to tell you why in a minute out of the room. The Lord is going to take this deeper and deeper and deeper, but you've got to maintain that. Pastor Ray, you can't maintain that for me. Holy Spirit is going to take you deeper and deeper and deeper, but through the week, you've got to maintain that. You've got to be ready to go to higher heights and deeper depths. I, I don't know if you're with me or not. I think I'm receiving this. Amen. You've got to be ready to go into deeper waters. Jesus is dealing with an issue in Luke 9, verse 62. And prior to that, there's a man that's wanting to follow Jesus. And he's kind of having a struggle with that. In other words, he accepted Jesus and everything's cool. But Jesus looks at him and says, Anyone, listen to me, who puts his hand to the plow and looks back ain't fit for the kingdom. So what does that mean to us? We follow him when we get into God's presence. And he brings us into this river of the Spirit. We're to maintain that level each week. And then to get ready for the new things that God has in store for us. Because he never intended you to stay right where you're at. Even though you're doing a great work for God. He's got more. But you can't stay where you're at. Because if you stay where you're at, eventually you're going backwards. So when you put your hand to the plow today, because you're there and you've done that, get ready for what God has in store for you this week. Because there's people out there on the mission field, your mission field, that God has called you to. He's not just called you to work this week and to cook breakfast and to cut the yard and all that stuff. God's calling you higher. And he's calling you to more of his spirit. The Lord dealt with me this week. A lot of times we'll get out as ministers and we'll talk about things of us for dealing with us now. So we can share that with you and direct you. Amen. And then as we leave the body follows. The Lord was speaking to me this week as we're preparing to start school. As we have reach for pastor and just different responsibilities. About my one-on-one time. And the Holy Spirit spoke to me and said, Steve, outside of the pulpit, outside of the ministry, you're really not doing everything that you need to do. There's really not enough souls being saved. People being filled and delivered and set free. You understand, church, that's what we're called to do. We're free. Look at your neighbor and say, We're free to the captives. Amen. We're the innocent of Jesus. God has called us to do more. Now, let me, let me make this real practical for you guys and give you an example of young people and adults. So, yesterday, I met in the gym. Jeremiah's playing ball with all of his homies. And I'm reading my book and minding my own business because I'm all caught up in this book called I Am Remnant because I am remnant. That's who I am. Okay? And Holy Spirit says, Go minister to this young man you just met named Ryan. And I'm the best of all the areas of quarterback in this high school. So I go minister to this young man and started to talk to him about relationship versus religion. Amen? Because if we're not careful, we'll get caught up in religion, but God wants us to have relationship. Amen? The Holy Spirit just opened up a whole new avenue with this young man as I just sit there and share with him and pour into me. But you know what? Yesterday I found out I did everything I wanted to do. All my stuff. Had to cut the yard out of my ears. And then even had to do some stuff on top of my honey ears. And some other things. But there's always time to follow the Spirit if we're led by the Spirit. Amen? And those, there are those out there that need the Spirit of God that is inside of us. So the challenge today is to go deeper in the Spirit this week. 
And don't go back. Don't go back. Maintain. You got to maintain. You got to maintain. Because God is going to you. Come on, why don't you step across the aisle and raise somebody's name. Shake their hand, tell them you're glad to see what they're asking for this morning. Got a lot of people out today, got a lot of people on vacation. Got several that are sick, so just keep everyone in your prayers. But God is here this morning. God is here in the house.
uh, Abba's house where Ron Phillips is the pastor, and it's about a five or six thousand member church, I think. And, and uh, so they asked Ron. They said, "Well, we're, we're interview we interviewed Pastor Kevin, and he doesn't have a clue why his church is growing. Maybe you do." And he, Pastor Ron said, "To be honest with you." All I can tell you is just the anointing of the Holy Spirit and the momentum has just kept on flowing. He said, other than that, there's no program, there's no plan, there's no agenda, there's no there's no rhyme or reason to why it's happening other than just an outpouring of the Holy Spirit and the momentum. Well, he said, there's scripture for that because it's not by might nor by power, but it's by my spirit, declares the Lord of hosts. That kind of removes the flesh out of the equation so that the spirit can fulfill the work that its purpose and plan to do. And so what I'm telling you is, and while many of our folk are on vacation, there is a momentum that God is at work here. And we want to continue to allow the Holy Spirit to work his work. As I told you the last Sunday before I left on vacation, let the Holy Ghost do his job. Amen. Hallelujah. Pastor Steve picked up on that last week. That he wants to take you higher to places you've never been. And then you're going to get caught in the rip current of the Holy Ghost. And he's going to pull you deeper into some of the things of the Lord. Let's worship him this morning, all right? We keep that momentum of the Holy Spirit flowing. It's been, it really has. This has been an astronomical summer. And I've just been amazed at what God's been doing here. And that we want to keep that that flow of the Holy Ghost moving forward. So let's just worship Him as we begin, all right? And lift up your gifts and your resources, your tithes and offerings to the Lord as we bless His Father in the name of Jesus. We thank you today for your favor and for your blessing upon this house. Lord, we ask that you would pour out your spirit. Lord, as we sang this morning, come flood this place. Fill the atmosphere, Lord, because your glory is what we're longing for. We want to live in it. We want to move in it. We want to have our being in the glory of your presence. That we might be what you have called and ordained us to be. Salt and light in the earth. That we might touch those with the anointing of the Holy Spirit. That will deliver and set the captive free. And for that, Lord, we are eternally grateful and we call it a privilege to be able to serve in the kingdom of the Most High God. And for that, we glorify your name. We exalt you above all blessing and praise and declare your lordship in this house. In the strong name of Jesus, let your blessing fall and rest upon your people. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. And they can worship him together. Give me a Receive what she's giving out actually prophetically. 
because the, the atmosphere uh, changes. Uh, there is a marvelous transformation that occurs when uh, the, that prophetic word begins to be released in the house and you as believers have the privilege to be recipients and participants in that. Wow, what an awesome, awesome privilege it is. And as she was doing that, uh, the Holy Spirit began to speak to us uh, re regarding the release over people that we need, uh, people who are coming to mind today. today. Does the Holy Spirit do that with you? Does He bring folks to your, to your remembrance, to your recollection? And as you do that, as He does that, and you participate with Him in that, then things that you begin to pray over, in, even in your thought process of prayer, uh, are, are released uh, in, into their lives. It's powerful. We don't think of it in those terms of God. We think we just got to get out and, you know, shake the horns of the altar and, and, and shake things loose. But I'm telling you that the Holy Spirit, He prays through us. And he makes intercession for us. He's praying through us continually. Hallelujah. And, and these are some of the dimensions of prayer that we've been delving into. Again, um, I'm going to be here on this uh, on this passage for a while, even though I'm going to allude to some other things. But we're going back to Jeremiah 33 3. And. Uh, by now, you're probably getting bored with it. But I want you to, we're going to get it firmly fixed in our spirit. Because if this church is going to do anything, we're going to call the Lord. He said, call and I'll answer. I think if more churches would do more calling, they'd see more answers. Amen? He said, call, and I'll answer. There is no way that you and I could uh, have stayed abreast of the events this week in the news and know that, or not know, that evil is taking over. Um, ISIS, Hamas, um, the the, uh, the the Palestinian conflict with Israel, um, all of these things uh, that are happening uh, abroad and here in the states with what's going on with all of the immigration uh, conflict that's going on, folks are are. Immigrating in here by the plane load and the bus load of people, more so than what we're able as a as a government and a people to keep up with. It is it is phenomenal. It is astronomical. We haven't even begun to see the swell tide of all that is going to take place. It's on the horizon. But when you take in that many folk. Uh, you are that, that come across our borders uh, uh, and they have not had uh, proper, proper medical care. Uh, we're going to see sickness and disease on the rise and on the rampant. Already there's talk of an epidemic proportion of tuberculosis and uh, things that are going to begin to hit uh, American soil and hit our culture and hit the human family. Um, I'm not here to talk about that so much today as I'm here to say that these are identifiers that we are in the last days. These are the last days and we see things that are coming to pass and as we see them coming to pass, what we ought to be is even more vigilant about how we live. Pastor Steve alluded to that in last Sunday's message. And today, God has called us to higher living, a higher plane, uh, a, a greater consciousness and awareness 
of the presence of the Holy Spirit that is at work in our lives. And so as a preacher, I've learned not to take anything for granted. I've learned that Jeremiah 33 tells us that even though it's a simple promise from God, just calling on Him, but there is something here that is a, a prerequisite, one that many times we miss, but it's already a predetermined. When you call upon Him, you must call out of a pure heart. Does anybody understand that? As a, as a believer, you don't. Not anybody can can just call upon the Lord. It has to be those who call upon Him out of a sincere and a pure heart. You see, sinners can't just run around calling upon the name of the Lord. The only prayer that God hears from the sinner is a prayer of repentance. When a sinner repents, God hears him. So we have to be sober-minded in our approach to God and realize that God is not going to bless us over our sins. Hello. Even though we're living in a culture that, you know, I've, I've preached a lot of funerals since I've been pastoring, and I hear statements in our culture like this. Well, you know, they're in a better place. Really? Are they really in a better place? Because the rich man lifted up his eyes and he was tormented in the flames of hell. He was not in a better place because he rejected the deliverance and the salvation that was available to him. So we can't just expect to walk around calling on God when we are entertaining known, hear me clearly, known disobedience in our hearts. You know when you go through the Bible and you examine Scripture, Scripture says that we're supposed to do right. God says, I want you to live right. That's the higher place He was calling us to. You just have to do right. It's like my father used to tell me. He said, son, I know you understand the principle I've been trying to teach you, but I don't have to tell you anymore. You've got the principle when you just obey and you just do it without having to be told to do it. God says, I want you to pursue me. That's what the Holy Spirit is in you for. To ignite. What, what we seen this morning Set a fire down in my soul. Ignite my soul, Lord, to pursue you with a hot, burning desire that cannot be contained, that I can't control because I desire more of you. Pursue me, God says. He says, be holy. Scriptures replete with that from cover to cover. Be ye therefore holy, for I, the Lord your God, am holy. When you go through the New Testament, that's where we find ourselves. You hear words like this in 1 Peter chapter 1. Let's begin with verse 3. 1 Peter 1, verse 3. Listen to this. Praise, honored, blessed, be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Messiah. By His boundless mercy, we have been born again to an ever-living hope. Through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Born anew into an inheritance which is beyond the reach of change and decay. Imperishable, unsullied, and unfading. Reserved in heaven for you. Who are being guarded or garrisoned by God's power through your faith. Till you fully inherit that final salvation that is ready to be revealed for you in the last time. You should be exceedingly glad on this account, though now for a little while you may be distressed by trials and temptations, so that the genuineness of your faith may be tested. Your faith, which is infinitely more precious than perishable gold, 
which is tested and purified by fire, this proving of your faith is intended to redound to your praise and glory and honor when Jesus Christ the Messiah, the Anointed One, is revealed. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now God is up to something here. He wants to, the, to know that the genuineness of your faith is being revealed. The, not a facade. Not a false pretense. Not going through the motions of religion. But so that God can reveal the genuineness of your faith. We do that through obedience to His Word. When God commands, He expects us to follow through obediently. And when we do, we see that Christ is more fully revealed in us and through us. Notice what Paul says to the church at Ephesus in chapter 1, verse 3. May blessing, praise, laudation, and eulogy be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Messiah, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual, given by the Holy Spirit, blessing in the heavenly realm, even as in His love He chose us, actually picked us out for Himself as His own, in Christ, before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy, consecrated, set apart for Him, and blameless in His sight, even above reproach, before Him in love. Now, that word blameless has been bothering me all week. When I decided to look at it, I found it peppered throughout Scripture. Uh, Philippians chapter 2, verse 12. Philippians 2, 12. Therefore, my dear ones, as you have always obeyed my suggestions, so now, not only with the enthusiasm you should show in my presence, but much more because I am absent. Work out, cultivate, carry out to the goal, and fully complete your own salvation with reverence and awe and trembling, self-distrust with serious caution, tenderness of conscience, watchful against temptation, timidly shrinking from whatever might offend God and discredit the name of Christ. Not in your own strength, for it is God who is all the while effectually at work in you, energizing and creating in you the power and desire both to will and to work for His good pleasure and satisfaction and delight. Do all things. Oh, this is God. Are you ready for this one? Oh, here we go. Do all things without grumbling and fault finding and complaining against God and questioning and doubting among yourselves. Oh, we could park right there for a while, but you need to really let that one sink into your spirit. Because if we're going to go to the heights and the depths of what God has called us to do, we're going to have to leave behind fault finding and grumbling and complaining and fear and doubt and all of these things that cause us to question, well, what about this? And why is God doing this? Sometimes He just ain't going to let you know. If He let you know, fear would so grip your spirit, you'd probably shrink back and run and throw the covers over your head and hide. You'd be doing a jump. You'd be running from what God called you to do. And then He'd have to prepare another fish for you. Pull you down into the depths until you spend two or three days there. And, and, and decided that you wanted to do it His way. He goes on to say in verse 15, so that you may show yourselves to be blameless and guileless. Speech. Guileless. Job, there was no guile found in Job's mouth. He would not falsely accuse the Lord. 
Hello, somebody. Yeah. I don't know what I don't know who I'm preaching to this morning, but I, I, I'm I'm giving that somebody God wants to order your speech. If He orders your steps, He wants to order your conduct in your speech. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Innocent and uncontaminated, children of God without blemish, faultless, unrebukable, in the midst of a crooked and wicked generation, spiritually perverted and perverse, among whom you are seen as bright lights. Stars are beacons shining out clearly in the dark. Is anybody getting a hold of this? Today? The image of Christ is being formed in you now. That's the Holy Spirit's assignment. It is to brighten you up. Debbie Boone didn't miss it when she sang, You light up my life. Because that's the Holy Spirit's assignment. You give me hope to carry on. You give me strength. You're the enabler. You're my power source. So he says here, hold out to it and offering it to all men the word of life. So that in the day of Christ I may have something of which exultantly to rejoice and glory in that I did not run my race in vain or spend my labor to no purpose. Are y'all hearing this today? As I'm reading this in your hearing, I'm echoing the words of what Paul said here, but I want you to understand that those are the same feelings I echo his sentiments. That what I'm preaching to you, God expects us collectively to carry out so that my preaching to you is not in vain, but that you lay hold and lay claim to those things that the Word of God has spoken for you to carry forth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <clears throat> then you hear Peter say in 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 11, Therefore, since all these things will be dissolved, what manner of persons ought you to be in holy conduct and godliness? looking for and hastening the coming of the day of God because of which the heavens will be dissolved, being on fire, and the elements will melt with fervent heat. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for new heavens and a new earth which, in which righteousness dwells. Therefore, beloved, looking forward to these things, be diligent to be found by him in peace, without spot, and there's that word again, blameless. Say that with me. Blameless. God wants to take out the blame. We need to stop playing the blame game. We've gotten in very inept in our culture. We've become very adaptable in our culture to playing the blame. We want to assign blame. It was somebody else's fault. Our politicians have become masters at it. They can be asked a simple yes or no question, and they will find a way to hedge around the answer. And what they want to do is filibuster the answer. They want to just talk away or explain away what their true intentions are so they don't have to reveal what the purpose that they're trying to accomplish or achieve is all about. What God is doing is saying, I want you to live without blame. You live in a crooked and perverse generation. You may live among people who use, even use what many car salesmen call situational ethics. I, I, I can adapt in order to achieve the end result of selling you the car. I can adapt the situation to fit whatever I want it to, to mean or whatever I need to say in order to convince you that you need my product. Hello. Crooked and perverse. So that what used to be wrong is now right. And what used to be right is now wrong. Never is that more prevalent than what's on the news in our times right now. Three years ago, there were 65,000 Christians in Iraq. Since ISIS has invaded, there in the last year, there has been 
a downsizing from 65,000 to 35,000 Christians because ISIS said, you either convert to Islam or you die. You hearing me? Today, as I speak, there are zero Christians in Iran. Zero. The persecution of those who embrace a life of following Christ, they'll give their lives for it. They'll give their lives for it. We look and say, oh, that would never come to America. Really? Really? Are we poised on the brink of that kind of challenge? That you would give your life as a Christ follower. That it would be required of you. You see, being saved by grace and being kept by grace does not allow me to live any way I want to live. I've said it before in, this, in your hearing. It's not about being soft on sin. When I'm saved by grace, I can't live any way I want to live, but I can live the way I ought to live. That's what I've just read in your hearing. I can live the way Christ has called me to live. When I'm saved by grace through faith and the Spirit of Jesus lives in me, what happens? I delight in the commands of the Lord. I delight in the law of the Lord. They aren't cumbersome to me. I don't say, oh shucks, I, don't, I wish that one wasn't in there. I wish he would have taken that one out because, see, some of us want Burger King Christianity. We want it our way. We want it the way we want it. We want the smorgasbord. We want to pick and choose. But God says, you need to delight in the commandments of the Lord. Why? Pastor Steve told it in your hearing this morning. It's the guidance of the Holy Spirit. That's what the law and the commandments are there for. That's why delighting in them, He will guide you into all truth. So I have to recognize in my life that with every breath I draw, I'm going to be attacked by my flesh in three ways. And from those commandments of the Lord, I must make a decision that I will obey them, I will move upon them because I'm always being pulled to draw away from them. This is making sense to anybody this morning. That's what my flesh does. He's drawing me to pull away from the commandments of the Lord that I ought to delight in. Because when I delight in Him, I delight in Jesus. I delight in Jesus alone. You see, we're all tempted in the same way that Christ was tempted. In all points. You see, we see those points. What were they? The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, you know them, and the pride of life. I want to say to you this morning that lust is always temporary gratification. Lust is always temporary gratification. Lust is always selfish because lust is a sick version of love. Lust is love turned inward. It becomes all about me. Anytime you're hearing people talk about, well, I'm just not getting my desires. I'm not getting my... It's all inward because now it's all about my fulfillment. Getting my needs met. You see, here's the difference. God's love is always turned outward. It's about letting His love come in and shine out. You take it in, it shines forth through you. Why? Because love is eternal. His love never ends. His love is always selfless. So the great attack against any believer is to turn inward, to become self-centered, to start living in less instead of more. Is anybody hearing me this morning? John 10.10, 10, the thief has come to kill, steal, and destroy, but I've come so that you can have a life and that more, 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 not less, more abundantly. 
to start living in the moment is very sensual. Because all you want is self-gratification. That's why 1 John chapter 2, verse 15, look what he says there. 1 John 2, 15. Do not love or cherish the world or the things that are in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Do not love the world shows you something about love and lust. Do not love the systems of the world. You see, you all have belief systems. There are certain value systems to which you live by, to which you adhere to. You make choices based upon those value systems, those belief systems. Now, what you have to learn here is, do you make choices based upon truth, absolute truth, or do you make choices based upon a conviction? A conviction may not be absolute truth. So we need to understand here that it could be my lust or my desire could be leading me to a false sense of security. I could call it a conviction and it not be based on absolute truth of God's Word. Why is it important to live according to truth? Because truth, according to Scripture, tell, teaches us I found it to be so experientially, is that living according to truth is liberating. It sets you free. God declares you free. That's why I'm talking about this morning the word that I highlighted today. Blameless before Him. Isn't it great not to have to live life on a continual guilt trip anymore? The guilt is removed. I'm blameless before him. Didn't say I was perfect. I'm headed there. You're headed there. But he wants to remove the guilt and the condemnation. That's why Romans chapter 8 teaches us this. There is therefore now. 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 Isn't that a beautiful word? Now. I don't have to wait for it. I don't have to get good enough to earn it. There is therefore now no condemnation to those that are in Christ, who walk not according to the flesh, but walk after the Spirit. Amen. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set me free from the law of sin and death. Hallelujah. I am liberated by the Holy Spirit's power and work inside of me. That's how it happens in you, when you release it. But if you never, if you never begin to declare, that's who I am. It won't happen for you. When you adhere to what the word of the Lord says, you then chant, set a fire down in my soul. Set a fire in me, Lord. I can't contain it. Burn out everything. Burn out every impurity. Burn out anything that's not like you. Because fire of the Holy Spirit denotes an infilling of purity. It removes the guilt trip. He removes the blame. Hallelujah. Anybody that loves the world now, the love of the Father is not in it. Don't, don't fall in love with the, system, with the systems of this world. Don't go to bed with the world. Don't get in bed with the things of the world. If you do, it's, a, it's, a, it's an earmark. It's a hallmark. It's a benchmark. The love of the Father is not in it. We knew the love of the Father wasn't in, in Judas. The woman comes in, takes her a year's worth of wages to get a hold of this fine perfume. And what does she do? Pours it out on Jesus' feet. Author of one song says, I'll pour my love on you. I want to pour my love on you. Listen. God wants to fill you full of the fragrance of Himself so that you can pour His love on other people. The fragrance of Himself so when you walk into the room, people go, what happened? You know, when we walk in the room and there's a foul odor, you know, people, sometimes people 
say if, if your house has been shut up for a while, we were gone for a week, we walked into the house. We walked into the house uh, Wednesday. As soon as we walked into the house, there was an odor in the house. I couldn't really tell what it was. But I said, do you smell that? Do you smell that? It was pungent enough that it just, mm, it was right there. And, and my, my sensory perception, my sense of smell picked up on it immediately. I wanted to figure out what it was. was. Was there something maybe going on with something electrically? Was the air conditioning system not working? Or was, was something left in, in the garbage can that Ryan didn't put in the garbage that might be in there decaying and would have left a fragrance or an odor in the room? Are you following me? We want to know what it is. Are you tracking with me in the spirit? That when Jesus begins to fill you full of himself and the fragrance of all that he is, and all he represents and who he is becoming inside of you. You walk in the room, not only does the atmosphere change, as people's sensory perception begins to change. What changed about the atmosphere? The fragrance, the aroma, the sweet smell of all that he is. All the fragrance of the fullness of his life begins to fill the room and the atmosphere is changed. I listen, folks, we haven't even begun to scratch the surface on all that God has destined and designed for us to do as agents of change in the world. Jesus, New Testament, Old Testament is so replete with examples of when you get a hold of who you are in Christ Jesus, everything, Aubrey began to, to, to that's what really got into my spirit this morning. Aubrey began to prophesy. See, sometimes we think, my God, why is she just on and on and on with this? Because she's releasing, she's releasing a prophetic word in the atmosphere. It's not because she just lacks something better to move on to. She's got she's a got hundred other courses she can move on to. But the Holy Spirit told her this morning, you park here and start prophesying change into the atmosphere. When Jesus shows up, the struggle changes. When Jesus shows up, the transformation occurs. When Jesus shows up, fear and doubt are dispelled. When Jesus shows up, faith fills your life. Everything changes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And that's what he wants to impart to us in this house. When you leave here, now you enter the harvest field. Then, now you're in the harvest field. You're in the mission field. And wherever you go, if it's sitting in a gym, reading a book, and the Holy Spirit says, go over and talk to that young boy. Go over and talk to that co-worker. This is a, when the moment that the Holy Spirit wants to inject the fullness of Jesus into somebody's life and introduce them into a new a whole new way of life. Totally transform their life. You've been called to do that. That's why we just went through a year of power and love. Why? Sir, ma'am, can I pray for you? Why? Why would you want to pray for me? Because God seemed to think you were worth the blood of His Son. He seems to think that you were worth the precious blood of his only begotten son. That's why I'm afraid. You don't know me. I don't know you, but I love you. <laughs> Jesus didn't come into the world to condemn the world, but to manifest the love of the world. So that the world through him could be saved. Anybody get a hold of this? Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. You see, he's not saying to love something that's going to pass away. This will never pass away. Everything is going to pass away except the souls of men and the Word of God. Hallelujah. So don't, don't, don't hook on to something that's only going to be temporarily fulfilled. The, the lust of the world. You see, again, we're not permitted to do anything we want to do. Uh, Paul says... Everything is lawful for me. I can do anything, but everything is not necessary. 
Anybody getting a hold of that? It's not necessary for my spiritual growth. It's not necessary if you see me do something against your conscience. I can leave that off. I'm free. It's true. I'm free. I'm bound by nothing but love. That everything is not necessary for me to get along in this life. You see, sometimes we can we think we can eat anything we want, eat all we want, and we're not going to suffer any consequences because of it. Anybody know where I'm taking you in the Holy Spirit here? Where your prayer life will take you? It teaches us moderation. It teaches us self-control. It's in Scripture. It's the truth of God's Word. We're not given permission just to go around stuffing ourselves full of pleasure and desire and wants anytime we want to. God says, your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. I don't know who I'm preaching to this morning. I may be preaching to me. I probably am. But God says our body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. And He says if you are doing things that are unhealthy to your body, it's eventually going to become unhealthy to your spirit. Is anybody hearing me this morning? And eventually, your body will teach your spirit obedience by the things you suffer. You and I. I'm not exempt from that. Not to mention the fact, some are saying, well, what's that got to do with prayer? What's that got to do with this eternity that you're talking about? It has everything to do with it. If we dishonor the temple of the Holy Spirit, whatever you dishonor, whatever area of your life that you're dishonoring the Holy Spirit, you will dishonor Him in other areas of your life. Is anybody getting a hold of this this morning? I'm talking about being blameless before Him. So we have, we need to have this that that spiritual work of the Holy Ghost going on inside of us that cleans up the impurities. Mm -hmm. Cleans them out. Works on us. Works in every area of our life. You can't just go out and purchase anything you want to because you've got money. You can't just go out and, and buy anything. We as American people, what do we do? People in the sales sales world, they know there's a sucker born every minute. And people just go out and they buy. It's called impulse buying. We just buy it because somebody talked us into it. We thought we wanted it. And we bought it. We got it. We got it home. Three days later we found out we didn't want it. We didn't want it because we didn't need it. So you aren't given permission by God to just go around doing anything you want to do anytime you want to do it. In everything you see, there must be a discipline. Why? Understand this, because your flesh is never satisfied. The flesh is never satisfied. Therefore, the Holy Spirit. See, I'm, I'm learning something. You, you may want to listen to your preacher on this. I'm learning some things the older I'm getting, is that godliness with contentment is great gain. And so, sometimes it's important to just be content with what I have. Amen. Just learn to be content there. And then if God wants to bless you with something, then let Him bless you in His time. Let Him do it in His time. And let allow the Holy Spirit to do His job. Let Him do it the way He wants to do it. Don't jump the gun on the Holy Spirit just because your flesh wanted something. It's important to be disciplined in those areas. It'll, it'll save you a whole lot of grief down the road. Last Sunday night I was sitting in a focus group with my brother-in-law and sister-in-law. 
the pastor of the church they attend, said, you know, I'm so glad that I waited on the Holy Spirit to effect launching our new building campaign. He said, I wanted to do it in 2008 and I would have plunged this congregation into $17 million worth of debt. And we were already in debt to the tune of almost $2 million. Had I not listened to the Holy Spirit who checked me and said, wait, see, because he had all the justification. Building a new complex, we purchased 17 acres of property, we're going to build a new, a new uh, two or 3,000 seat complex, and that's going to define my success as a pastor. And living in the town of the denominational headquarters, it's going to elevate me on up the denominational ladder. He said, the Holy Spirit said, you need not be defined by any human being. You must be defined by the Spirit. Allow the Holy Spirit's impartation. See, you're the elected God. You're the chosen of God. Let the Holy Spirit bring the definition. Let Him bring the idea. Amen. He said, I waited. If we had taken out a loan back in 2008, interest in 2008 was running at six and a quarter percent. He said, if the Holy Spirit gives us the green light to proceed now, and it looks like he may, but we're still waiting on his direction, interest is 3.25. We will say, I would, as pastor, have saved this church millions of dollars. Why? Because I waited on the Lord. I wasn't interested in climbing the denominational ladder. I wasn't interested in allowing building that church to define whether I was a successful pastor. You understand? The desire for things will get us in trouble. The desire for wanting those things before God says it's okay. Wait for the green light of the Holy Ghost. Wait for what God's saying. It takes you off the guilt trip. It leaves you blameless. Okay? Uh, not to mention the fact that in the midst of their waiting, they paid off $2 million in debt. And today they're dead. Now one, Waiting on the Lord. Our culture plunges itself. I mean, listen, to, have you ever heard of Dave Ramsey? Financial Peace University. If you listen to Dave, if you listen to his talk show, most of the people who are calling up for financial advice, student loan indebtedness, anywhere from forty to $90,000, credit card indebtedness, twenty, fifty, seventy-five, dollars $100,000 in debt. They've got 10 credit cards maxed out to the hill. On top of just trying to support the family, paying the life bill, paying the, paying the house payment, buying gas, paying the car payment. They're up to their ears. How are we going to get out? What's going to happen? Why? Simply because of the lust of the flesh, wanting what it wants before God says it's okay to move. Anybody hear me this morning? Hallelujah. You've got to set up a game plan. God's giving you a game plan. And it'll keep you off the guilt trip of being, of, of, of living in a posture of, of continued blame or assigning blame. The quickest way couples wind up in divorce, the number one divorce is over money. And not being in, knowing how to handle money and being in agreement to set up a family budget and how to manage money. Now, today's message is not designed so that you'll swing from the chandeliers and run the aisles. This is about practical living. This is about learning. Listen, when you lay your head down on your pillow at night and your conscience are free of guilt or blame or condemnation toward God and toward your fellow man, you can sleep peacefully. You can sleep in the peace of God. You can live your life according to what God's principles are instead of the three principles of the belief systems of the world that I have left with us. 
We've got to live according to God's principles. I'm going to say it real simple. Just do right. Just live right. Just obey the commands of the Lord. And he said, I'll keep you free. I'll keep you house blessed. I'll keep you in favor. I'll keep you moving in the guidance of the Holy Spirit so that your life now becomes a witness and a testimony to the goodness of God. You can recommend God to anybody now. Because you have a relationship that is so intimate and a walk with Him that is so blessed that you take such delight in Him, you can't help but share it with whoever you need. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So let's get with it. It's the, the momentum is happening. The momentum, God has said to this body, it's preparation time is almost over. Preparation time is almost over. He gives you an opportunity to get prepared. And I'm preaching the way I'm preaching so that we can be prepared. Alright? I'm going to go back and allude to it. All that you're doing is to be done to the glory of God. And remember what I read in your hearing this morning. Do it without fault finding. The, the greatest way to have a church split is to get somebody in the ranks that's all the time fault finding. And grumbling and complaining with what goes on. Everything isn't perfect around here. I know that. But we're going to get it. We're going to fine tune it. We're going to tweak it. We're going to get it the best we can get. And we're going to depend on God to help us with all of it. But we're going to do it heartily and joyfully as unto the Lord. We're not going to grumble about it. We're not going to complain. We're not going to backbite. We're not going to find fault. Why did you get so quiet? Right? We don't do that around here. If you want to be an agent, if you want to see things change around here, you be the agent of change. Very rarely have I turned people down when people come and say, Pastor, I see something that needs to be done here and I'll be the agent of change. I'll provide the funds. I'll provide the resources. I'll provide the manpower. Let's get it done. You'll always get an affirmative vote from me. <laughs> Let's do it. Go for it. Amen. Praise the Lord. God's, God's got things in, in store for this body, and there's plans that are in the works. My Lord, I, it, it'd take me another two hours to rehearse them all. I won't go there this morning, but I, I just I want you to understand there are there are things that God's already outlined for us to accomplish in the spirit, and we don't have time to sit around discovering all that's wrong. We need to see the vision. We need to release the Holy Spirit to do His job and go for it. And it's real simple. There's a lot of people out there that are dying and going to hell. And unless you and I go be light and salt to them and be the fragrance of Jesus and the hands and feet of Jesus, Pastor Steve talked about this morning, we'll miss them. We work with them. We pass by them every day. And God's given us an assignment to get it done. All right? Praise the Lord. Now let's get with it. Praise God. You, and, and a lot of folks here on vacation today, when they get back, they're going to get more of this. Call unto me. Call unto me. Why? I'm looking for great and mighty things. How about you? Are we looking? That's what's in this preacher's heart. The miraculous, as my colleague Steve Strader says, the miraculous, ridiculous things. The things of God. Hallelujah. I just want him to do some ridiculous things. Great and mighty things you've never seen before. 
Is that in your spirit? Is that in your mind? That's in our hearts. That's what we believe. That God's going to do great and mighty things. Not just for the sake of doing great and mighty things, but because we call on Him out of a pure heart. And He answered. I call when you answer. He even said, when you really get when you really get the fullness of all he is inside of you, he says, before you call. How about that? Before you call, I'll answer. You ready for that one? Uh, we're looking for some Peter and John people. If you're just walking down the street and your shadow passes on. When they get wet. I was thinking about this morning, that this morning while Aubrey was prophesying. I, I was seeing demons all over this place. I was seeing people delivered and set from high in their life. I was seeing guilt trips being taken out of people's lives and, and bondages broken and, and, and just pulled, pulled out of their lives to where they're no longer in bondage to those. Are you seeing those things in the spirit? Call and I'll show you. Call and I'll show you. If I'm talking to the right folk this morning, are there are there any things that the Holy Spirit has brought to your remembrance that God is saying, call and I'll answer. Call and I'll answer. Call and I'll show you great in mind. Hallelujah. 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 Don't you just stand on your feet right now? I just hear the Holy Spirit saying to us, you call and I'll answer. You don't have to run the aisles. It's good if you do. It's good if you can. It's okay. We, we won't have the ushers haul it down. But if you can just, in your spirit, you're seeing some of the things that the Holy Spirit has, has brought to you remembrance this morning. I just want you to just begin to give voice to that. Give voice to the word of the Lord. Father, in the name of Jesus. I saw healing this morning. I thank you for the release. I saw healing in the, in the spirit. This People being set free from all manner of sickness and disease. All manner of pain. All manner of hurt. I thank you for the deliverance and the release. Of I, thank you for, I thank you for pure hearts. For people who've been struggling with with. Bondages of the flesh, lusts of the flesh. I thank you for the, the des their, their desires being turned to the delight of the Holy Spirit, the guidance of the Holy Ghost. I thank you for that this morning. Lord, I, I'm not speaking idle words this morning. We've learned that when we pray, we are to pray with expectation. Whatsoever things you desire when we pray, we believe that they are ours. Because the Lord our God has promised. Those that walk up rightly before me, I will withhold no good thing. No good thing. So we declare our household. Our household is delivered. Our household is set free. Our children, our grandchildren, our children's children are set free. They will become heirs of the promise. They will become heirs of the promise of God. They will fulfill the destiny of God. They will not succumb to the lusts of the flesh. They will not succumb to the belief systems of this world. They are a chosen generation. They are chosen by God. They are anointed by God. They are a royal priesthood. They will fulfill all that Christ has come to and shed his precious blood for it, and to send it back to the right hand of the Father, and sits with him now, ever making intercession on our behalf, that what we have called on earth, we have spoken, it shall be revealed and done in heaven. Hallelujah. We have learned that when we speak, we ought to speak of those things that are not as though they were. Yeah. Believing. Believing that they are coming to pass. They are done. For the word of the Lord is a sure word. It is a now word. It is an all time word. Hallelujah. And even if you have delayed 
the answer will yet come. Though it tarry, wait for it. For they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. They will mount up with wings as eagles. Hallelujah. And so, Father, I thank you that today, your people, your chosen ones, are soaring to new heights that the Holy Spirit is taking us to. We're going to deeper depths that you are pulling us by the rip current of the Holy Spirit, even though the waves have been pounding us, though the billows have been rolling, though the things have been seeming like they've swept over our souls and our spirits. God, we know that it's you. We know that it's your calling. We know that it's your appointment. We know that it's your destiny. And you will fulfill that which you have begun. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So I thank you this morning for deliverance. I thank you for healing in this house. I thank you, Father, that our spirits and our minds have a peace and an assurance and a calm that when we walk in purity, we are taken out of the blame game. We are blameless before you. And so I delight in you this morning, Satan. I delight in you, for you are the lover of our souls. And I thank you as we go forth out of this house today. I declare the Spirit of the Lord is upon you. And you're to go forth to set the captive free wherever you find them. Be the light and the salt to which God has called and destined and ordained you to be. And set the captive free. When you walk into the room, let the environment change. Let the atmosphere shift and release the fragrance of the Lord out of your soul. Hallelujah. In the strong name of Jesus, let it happen. That he may be glorified in our lives and his church. The kingdom of God may be advanced in the earth. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless you. Give us our closing scripture, Tom. Declare it with me. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my firm, impenetrable rock and my redeemer. Amen. God love you. See you Wednesday night. Thank <laughs> you.